Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. I'm very excited to share with you this new video series about the Dart language. This video series includes a total of 35 lessons and over 90 minutes of content. And so if you want to get started with Flutter but you feel that you need a solid introduction to the Dart language, this is a great place to start. This material is designed for beginners and I will explain everything from scratch. If you already have some prior experience with some other language, then you will be familiar with some of the concepts covered here. So, let's get started. In this section, we are going to learn about the Dart language, and I think it's useful to do this so that we will have all the basics covered once we start writing Flutter code. Okay, so let's start with an overview of the Dart language. Dart is an object-oriented language, and what that means is that we typically structure our code inside classes. And as we will see, classes hold data as well as the methods for manipulating it. So if you're not familiar with classes, then don't worry, because we will talk about them in detail in this introduction. Second, Dart has a C-style syntax, and this is very similar to a lot of mainstream languages, such as C, Java, JavaScript, or even Swift. So if you know any of those, you will see that there are a lot of similarities with Dart. Dart is a statically typed language, and what that means is that the types of the variables are known at compile time. As we will see, Dart has a sound type system, which helps us write in code that is safe and more predictable, and we will see exactly what I mean by that as we explore the language. Dart is a versatile language that can run on multiple runtime environments. So if your target is a Flutter app running on a mobile device, then Dart code is compiled into native machine code. But if you want, you can also run Dart through the command line, and also Dart can run on the browser, and the way this works is by using a so-called transpiler, which converts Dart code to JavaScript code. Finally, Dart is productive and fast, and that is due to the nature of the Dart compiler. So Dart comes with a just-in-time compiler that runs during the execution of the program, compiling on the fly. And the benefit of this is that we can use a technology called Hot Reload that helps us develop our apps faster. And we will look at this extensively throughout this course. And when we finish writing our apps and we want to generate builds that we can upload to the App Store, then we can use an ahead-of-time compiler which is optimized for compiling code that is fast to execute. And this makes Flutter apps very performant. Okay, so now that we have seen the main characteristics of the Dart language, we can start getting more familiar with it. So let's do that in the next video. We are now ready to take a deep dive into the Dart language, and the way we are going to do this is by using this online code editor called DartPad. So if you open up your browser, you can reach this page by typing in this URL address, dartpad.dartlang.org. And DartPad is something that we can use to quickly write Dart code and observe the results. As we can see, on the left side we have a panel where we can write some code, and then we can press on the Run button over here, and what this does is to take the code that we have written and execute it. And on the right we have this console where we can see the results of running our code. So we are going to use DartPad to explore the main features of the Dart language and we can get started on the next video. We are now ready to start writing a simple program from scratch and to do that we are going to select this code and delete it. And next we need to define the entry point of our program which is the place where our code starts running. So to do that we can type in the following void space main and then open and close parentheses and then open curly bracket and then close curly bracket like that and then we can start writing some code in here so just to be clear it is guaranteed that any code that we place inside here will be executed when we press run and in fact we can press run now and we can see that the console log is now empty because our program is not doing anything just yet Okay, so let's make things more interesting, and what I'm going to do next is to write some code and then I'm going to explain it. So here I'm going to type in string with a capital S, like this, and then name, 
space equals space and then in single quotes I'm going to type in Andrea which is my name and then I'll say my colon at the end and then I'm going to try to print my name so I'm gonna go to a new line and here I can say print and then open parentheses and then this time with double quotes hello comma I'm and then dollar name and then I'm going to put a semicolon at the end so I can quickly try this and press on the round button and I can see that the console now says hello I'm Andrea so let's try to work out how our simple program works in the next video in the last video we have written a simple program to print my name and as a next step I want to explain what we have done here on this line so to do that I can show you a diagram so what I have here is an expression that we have written to create a variable so what is a variable? a variable is a reference that is used to store a value so over here we create a value which in our case is a string literal and then we assign this value by using this assignment operator to a variable which is called name and then we have chosen to give an explicit type to our variable so in this case we use a string which is just a type that we can use to store a sequence of characters so once again over here we create a value which is a string literal and we assign it to a variable called name and this variable is of type string and to complete our statement we need to remember to put a semicolon at the end of the line now this may seem like a simple expression but it is a good example that shows us how we can declare and initialize a variable so what is the difference between a variable declaration and a variable initialization well as the name says a variable declaration is the process of defining a variable and giving it a name so that it can be used later a variable initialization is the process of assigning an initial value to that variable. Okay, so let's get back to DartPad and we can continue on the next video. In the last video we have seen how to declare and initialize a variable in Dart. And as we can see on the next line, here we have a statement that we use to print the value of our variable. So how does this work? We can tap on the print statement over here and if we look at the bottom right we can read that print prints a string representation of the object to the console. So whatever we give to the print statement inside the parentheses is going to be printed to the console and in this case we use a string value which is defined in double quotes and just to be clear to define strings in Dart we can use both single quotes like I've done here or double quotes like in this case okay so as we can see here the string value that we pass to our print statement says hello I'm dollar name and this is a special syntax that is used when working with strings in Dart so by referencing our name variable with a dollar sign inside a string literal we are saying Hey Dart, I want you to take this variable that I put in here and replace it with its value. And this substitution approach is called string interpolation. Okay, so what I want to show you next is that string interpolation can be used to produce strings from more complex expressions than just simple variables. So as an example, here I could type in print and then open brackets and then within double quotes I could say my name has and then dollar and then within curly braces here I can type in name dot length like that and then letters in the end and then I can run this code again and what I can see is that the console now prints the first line and then my name has six letters and the way this code works is that here we have name dot length which is a property of our string variable and just to be clear when we want to interpolate an expression inside a string 
then we need to remember to use the dollar sign and put the expression inside curly braces like I've done here. And just to show you why this is important, here I could remove the curly braces and then if I run again, then this is the result that I get on the console. So it says my name has Andrea.length letters. And the reason for this is that Dart is only interpolating the dollar name variable and is treating the dot length as part of the final string. So let's put the curly braces back and then we can run again and then we can continue on the next video. Up to this point we have seen how to declare variables and print them to the console. What I want to do next is to introduce some different types of variables. So here I'm going to type in int age equals 34 semicolon and then double height equals 1.84 semicolon. And then at the end I can go and add a couple of more print statements. So here I can say print I'm dollar age years old and then print I'm dollar height meters tall and then I can run this code. As you can see the console shows the values that are stored inside our age and height variables and once again this is possible because we are using string interpolation. So we have now seen three different primitive types that we can use to declare variables. So we have string for storing string literals and we have int for storing integer values and we have double for storing decimal values. And this is a good time to introduce a different way of declaring variables. So what I'm going to do now is to replace these types with a new keyword called var. So here I'm going to have var name equals Andrea and then var age equals 34 and var height is 184. And I can run again and I can see that the result is exactly the same. So what is the meaning of var? We can use var as a way of defining variables without explicitly declaring what their type is. And the reason this works is that the Dart language can infer the type of these variables automatically from the values that are being assigned to them. So because Andrea is a string literal, the Dart compiler knows that name is a variable of type string. And equally, it knows that age is a variable of type int and that height is a variable of type double. And just to prove to you that this is the case, here I could type in height equals, and then within single quotes, Bob. And the compiler shows me an error saying that a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type double. So this means that after a variable is initialized, then its type is clearly defined and cannot change in the future. And this is what makes Dart a statically typed language. And the process by which Dart infers the type of a variable from its initializer is called type inference. Okay, so we can remove this line and continue on the next video. In the last video, we have seen how to use the var keyword to declare variables. And we have learned that when we do this, the compiler can infer the type of the variable from the expression that is on the right side of the assignment. So once we initialize a variable with var, its type is known at compile time. And if we want, we can also change the value of that variable by assigning it again, provided that we use a value of the same type. To show you what I mean, here I could type in hi equals 1.90 and then I could print again the value of the height variable for example by copy pasting this line and if I run this code we can see that we now get a console log that says I'm 1.84 meters tall 
and then another one that says I'm 1.9 meters tall. So when we declare a variable with var, we declare a variable that is mutable. And this means that we can change its value. Now, I want to introduce a new keyword, which is called final. And final is used to declare a variable that is immutable. So over here, I could change the declaration by saying final height equals 1.84. And as you can see, the compiler now complains that height is now a final variable and it can be set only once. So the key takeaway here is that we can declare mutable variables with var and we can declare immutable variables with final. And it is normally a good idea to declare variables as final every time we know that they are not going to change. Okay, so I can now clean up this code and we can continue on the next video. In the last few videos, we have been talking about variables and types, and we have learned that Dart is a statically typed language, which means that Dart types are known at compile time. In this video, I want to introduce a new keyword that is sometimes used to declare variables that can be of any type, and that keyword is called dynamic. So over here, I could change this declaration by saying dynamic height equals 1.84, and because I've declared my height to be dynamic, it means that if I really want, here I could say height equals Andrea, and the compiler doesn't complain about this. So I can run the code again, and I can see that on the console I get a line saying I am Andrea meters tall. Now we know that this doesn't make sense, because height is a variable that is meant to store a numeric value. But because we have declared it as dynamic, the compiler lets us assign anything we want. So in general, we should only use dynamic if we really don't know the type of a variable when it is initialized. And we should use var or final instead, so that we can make the most of type inference. And just to be clear, the whole point of a statically typed language is that we can get some guarantees about the types of the variables that we use. And this leads to code that is safer and easier to use correctly. As a proof of this, I can change this declaration once again to var, and now the compiler can help us and tell us that a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type double, which is exactly what I've done here. So we can delete this line and continue on the next video. This is the end of part one. This introduction to Dart is a free sample of my upcoming Flutter course. So if you want to receive updates about my course, you can sign up on my website codingwithflutter.com and you will receive a promotional code when the course goes live. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.